Hello and welcome to another Reaper blog tutorial. Today we're focusing on a set of scripts from MPL. These are included with Repack, so you can get these when you install Repack at repack.com, R-E-A-P-A-C-K.com, and they're all free. So let's check them out. You might notice that this video jumps between two different recordings and the names of these uh, scripts changes throughout. I'm recording this video twice um, after recording the first version. I gave some suggestions to MPL, and within an hour, he fixed some bugs and implemented my suggestions. And so that's why we're just jumping back and forth between uh, two recordings. So this first one we're going to look at is called Add re to Selected Tracks, Ignore Default Preset. And this one will also add in the um, high pass and low pass filters that will be all the way up at the ends of the frequency range. Uh, it'll add those controls to the track. I'll run that. And so we have the high frequency and the low frequency filters right there on the track. And so if you have a starting point preset, um, this should be more compatible with that. What he corrected was that um, the filters were like down here. And actually band four was like a, a band pass because it just didn't account for different uh, settings uh, with the band numbers. And so from the track, we can adjust the filter like this, even without even opening the plugin. So it should open up with a pretty neutral setting, and we can always just drag that and get quick access to the controls. Um, we can double click these track controls to open the plugin window, which is pretty great as well. That's not part of the script, but you know that's just something that's built into Reaper. And in the mixer, if we want to see those track controls, we right click on the master track and we're looking for show effects parameters when size permits. And so there's high uh, frequency high and frequency low. You can double click to open that up or just adjust right there on the track. Uh, so that was add re cue to selected tracks, ignore default preset. And it also adds in the high and low pass filters on the track controls. Next, we're going to look at solo last touched re band. There's two different versions. He said that they, they do work differently. Even after he explained it to me, I didn't really see any difference, uh, but it might work differently for you. So anyways, let's say I grab band one and I'm adjusting it and I just kind of want to hear what I'm taking out. Uh, that's not possible with re by itself, but this script fixes that. So I'm just going to touch um, the frequency of band one. And if I run the script, it's going to flip that to the opposite filter shape so that we can hear what we're taking out and run that script again. And it goes back. And you're going to want to have this assigned to some sort of keyboard shortcut for convenience. So uh, let's just play this. And I'll solo it. And that works with other things like this. Uh, we were just sweeping through here trying to find, you know, maybe a harsh frequency. Um, the, you know, the, the way we usually do it is to sweep like this with a big boost, which can kind of make everything sound bad. What this will do is convert this into a bandpass filter and disable all the other EQ points. So we can solo as we drag this around and then unsolo it. And then we've got our our um, our filter set at the right frequency. So I'm going to solo this and play. So it sounds pretty nasty there. I'm just going to run that again, and I'll just pull that gain down a little bit, and maybe adjust the bandwidth. These settings do change here as well. So the gain and the bandwidth we can adjust, and when we uh, go in and out of solo, it's going to keep those settings remembered. So. Let's do the same thing with um, this band. So there was sort of a boxy sound there, and I was just notching that out. And yes, yeah, so it's a pretty convenient way of, of uh, working. The next one we're going to look at is MPL Build Harmonic Series Bands for Focused Re-EQ. 
And this is another one that was updated based on my suggestions to him. What this does is going to make a evenly spaced, like uh, octaves for frequencies. So if you start at 50, it's going to put in points at 100, 200, 400, et cetera, for as many points as there are in the EQ. So I'm just going to put in a bunch of points, like 24 points. Okay, so there's 24 points in re-EQ right now, and I'm going to run this action. And we have a bass frequency. This is designed for removing hum from, you know, from a signal, and then all of its harmonics, which are usually evenly spaced. So I'm going to set this to, um, yeah, we could do 50 hertz. The amount of reduction, we can set this to uh, minus 20 or um, really any number there. And it's going to uh, have a slope so that the higher the frequency, the less reduction there is. Um, but this could go all the way down to a minus 150. There's a gain reduce uh, ratio, I guess you would call it. I think this affects the slope. I'm not 100% sure. It's not exactly the same. It's not the same as bandwidth, I don't think. Um, I forgot to ask him about that one. But we can also link the bandwidth so that when we're adjusting the bandwidth of uh, band one, all of the notches will follow with the same um, width. And link gain is something that he added based on my suggestion so we can adjust the gain of all of them equally. So I'm going to start with these settings here. So it's going to take off minus 20. It's going to make 24 notches uh, with the lowest one being minus 20 dB. And so there we go. And I'm going to turn off the tab so we can see this more clearly, like that. I want to make sure that you're on the correct band. There we go. So we can adjust the gain, plus or minus, and uh, adjust the bandwidth. There we go. So let's hear this. Uh, so without it, it sounds like this. And with it, it sounds like this. And I think it can sound really interesting when you invert the bands, you're adding gain to it. You can also use this option and when you right click in the grid, uh, flip all bands. And so then any cuts you had will become boosts and it'll just make these really narrow. And let's hear that now. So you can make some really interesting sort of resonator effects. Uh, let's do this on the drums, same settings. So the, the steeper it is, the more sort of a delay is introduced and in this weird sort of resonance. So now these drums kind of sound like they're made out of rubber. which is pretty weird. And I had some fun taking that and uh, making a, a second track sending into this, a Unity Gain pre-effects, and then inverting the polarity of this track. So now uh, the original drums are sending, are on both tracks, but by inverting the polarity, we should just kind of get that, uh, or more or less we'll get just that the resonance and the filtered sound. And I think that's a pretty cool effect. And I don't think anyone would have the patience to set that up manually. Um, once we have that set up, we can, we can always run this again and choose a different frequency. So let's take 75 Hertz and uh, with band one focus, we're just going to get that bandwidth um, super tight and bring it up. And so I love those kinds of weird effects. You can make some 
really cool stuff. Here, here it is with that pad sound. So I think that's a really cool effect and a cool script. Next, we're going to use this action port focused re bands to spectral edits on selected items. Let's just take 1K and make a, make a narrow notch here. Let's say it's uh, minus 60 at 1K. Selecting the item, selecting that frequency band, like that and then running it. Okay, so we got it's a little hard to see here. And close that and close the plugin. We do have spectral edits on this item, and we can go into uh, spectral view, make this full screen, and there is that 1K um, filter in there just at that one spot. I mean, it's it's hard to see because it's such a, a narrow cut that we're doing, but you can see that the spectral gain is at minus 61, which is exactly where we put it. So that can be an interesting way of um, you find the frequency that you need with re-EQ, and then you convert that into a spectral edit. I don't know how practical it is because it's so hard to adjust on this tiny thing. I, I find that like the controls disappear depending on where you're zooming in. Um, and sometimes these controls on the sides don't even pop up when it's selected. Uh, and well, here's how it sounds. It will take your selected frequency. It will make a spectral edit with that bandwidth, with that amount of gain and at that frequency and it'll put it into the selected area of the items or the entire items if there's no time selection. So it's an interesting effect. I think um, it's still kind of difficult to use um, with spectral editing in Reaper the way it is, but I can't deny it's a cool thing you can do with re-EQ. And that's not going to be possible with any other EQ. So really cool stuff. There's an interesting pair of actions here for scaling the focused re-EQ bands up or down. So I'm going to um, scale them up first. So it's essentially exaggerating everything that we've done here in the EQ, changing all the gains of all the bands that are active. And this other one, scale focused re -EQ bands gain down, is going to reduce the difference between the EQ, make it more subtle. Often when you're working in re-EQ, you end up changing the order of the bands. Just as you're working, they get mixed up. So I've got band one, band seven, two, three, four, five, and six. What this action does here, sort focus re-EQ bands by frequency, it's going to keep all the same settings, but it's just gonna renumber these so that they go in sequence again. So if I put band three there, I put band six down here and run that action again, I've got band one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven in order. Split focused re EQ to left and right routing. So, what this actually does is make a left and a right version of re EQ with all of the settings linked. So, we've got left and right, dual mono, linked EQ. So, we can control the frequency, the bandwidth, and the gain. A band one, two, three, and four. You can see them linked there. Gain is linked, bandwidth is linked. Um, you're going to have the best results probably doing this through the plugin controls rather than dragging. Mouse wheel seems a little bit glitchy. It doesn't quite want to respond, but uh, that's more of a effect of the parameter link, I think. There's not really any point in doing this on two plugins if everything is linked. Once you start adding in independent bands, let's say band five is only on the left side. So here's how that sounds. And I'll put in a band five over here and I'll put that just on the right side. So 
So we can have both linked and unlinked bands using this script. Pretty awesome. So that's all I wanted to show you. All these great scripts are from MPL, and I'm sure he would appreciate a donation if you find these useful. And that's it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Follow me on Facebook and Twitter. You can join our Facebook group, Reaper Blog Community. You can support the Reaper Blog through Patreon and visit reaperblog.net for a lot more tutorials.